The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter, Patty's Page, and you are? I'm Tim Gagline, Vice President uh, of uh, Government Relations at Focus on the Family. And you're here at Concordia Seminary? Yes, I'm at Concordia in Fort Wayne, uh, and I've uh, had the pleasure and honor of speaking out about religious liberty and rights of conscience issues. Uh, I was speaking about two or three of the important Supreme Court cases. Two of them are in this term and will be decided in May and June. And I was also talking about other legislative and statutory issues as they relate to religious liberty and rights of conscience. One of the things that happened in the course of my talk is that I learned that uh, the issue of human life and of marriage, family, parenting also crosses over into this space of religious liberty and conscience, and so it was a real honor and pleasure to be able to talk about those as well. So, do you have anything uh, to say to my audience, especially for pro-life? I've been a member of the pro-life movement since I was in fifth grade. I am very strongly pro-life, and I'm very honored and humbled to say that Focus on the Family, uh, which is the great ministry uh, for which I work, is uh, one of the leading members of the coalition of the national pro-life movement. Uh, Focus on the Family was founded by Dr. James Dobson more than 40 years ago. And in the life of Focus on the Family, our work in Washington, our work in all 50 states, has been rooted very deeply and uh, broadly in the success of the pro-life movement. I'm very confident that the pro-life movement is winning. We have a lot uh, of work ahead of us, and we are uh, very confident that we're going to continue to work with the rising generation of young Americans to show them the beauty and sanctity and dignity of all human life. So I feel confident, but I also realize it's a contest of ideas, and we have a lot of work to do. You work with Dr. Alveda King uh, several times. I've known Dr. Alveda King for many years. I think that she is one of the stalwart members of the pro-life movement. I respect Dr. King very much. And of course, she is in a tradition in her family of civil rights. And uh, I use that phrase very carefully because the civil rights movement uh, means something. I'm a Lincoln man. I'm a great admirer of Abraham Lincoln and a great admirer of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. So civil rights uh, in our American vernacular, in public policy, it means something specific. So when I connect the civil rights movement, the historic civil rights movement, to the questions of human life, I do so with, with great prudence. But I believe they are connected. Uh, my late great friend, Richard John Newhouse, famously said, that America should be a country where every child, every child, is welcomed into the world and protected by the law. That is the goal of the pro-life movement, and that's why I'm humbled to be a part of it. Thank you, sir, you for being on my show. My pleasure. This Thank is you, Patty. your name again? My name is Tim Gagline, and I am one of the vice presidents at Focus on the Family. Thank you, sir, Thank you. and God bless, and may you continue. For life. Pro life. Right. Hey, may you continue to do what you are doing. God Thank bless you, you. Thank and you. happy Easter. Thank you. To God alone be the glory. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Welcome to my show. This is, we are at Concordia Theological Seminary, downstairs in the basement in the library. To my left is Reverend Michael. Salome, 
Hello, welcome back. So Before good to see you again, Patty. How Very glad to be here. When was the last time we've been together? Oh, a whole it's, year ago? I don't know. It's been quite a year. I usually come in May. Got a little bit early yeah, this year, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. March mm -hmm. is still March. Oh, mm -hmm. So you're here early. Yes, ma'am. You threw me right off uh, schedule. <laughs> so um, what have you been up to for the last year? Since oh, I've seen you. I mean, well, first and started. foremost, loving on my wife and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been married 18 years. We've got three boys. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, our oldest son just got his driver's permit, so you can see the gray hair start to come in oh, a little I, bit. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, it's coming <laughs> in. Uh, but beyond that, uh, continuing to serve as the executive director of Lutherans for Life, and we've had a lot going on. So. We had uh, four regional conferences across the United States last year. One of those regional conferences was right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I believe that was in September. And those conferences were uh, wildly successful. We had more people, more attendees, and more participants even than we expected. Um, so in 2019, we'll be having regional conferences across the U.S. again. We'll in, be here. Couldn't say yet. We haven't chosen our locations. 2018, we'll have a national conference. That will be in... Um, the other holy Lutheran city of St. Louis, where I currently reside. Uh, our theme for that conference will be from age to age the same. We're going to emphasize uh, how God's grace does not change throughout human history, how God's grace uh, and the value of human life does not change no matter how old you are, whether you are still in mama's belly or whether you are in a hospital bed or whether you're at home, getting ready to go be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, at every state, at every stage, God's grace is the same. And we'll also be celebrating 40 years of Lutherans for Life. We've oh been around for goodness. four decades. 40 years. Yes, equipping Lutherans to be gospel-motivated voices oh. for life. So what are you going to do with that uh, 40 years celebration? Well, we are going to, uh, in, we've invited to our conference um, several of the pioneers of Lutherans for Life, people who were instrumental in organizing us from the very beginning, who have been um, very dear to us along the way. And so and our, this? this will be in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, October 12th and 13th, I believe, at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Olivet, Missouri. That's a suburb of Missouri. Happens to be the congregation where my family and I attend. Yeah. No, we attend. Oh, you attend there. You yes. don't go up there. No. So, so in addition to that, then, I have uh, been traveling around the country, um, speaking in places like Concordia Theological Seminary about the God-given value of human life and how we as Christians, as God's people, as Lutherans, can be gospel-motivated voices who proclaim uh, to people that God holds them precious no matter what they can do or what they look like or how old they are. Um, and uh, encouraging volunteer communities to take action uh, in their local areas to show that. Well, um, <clears throat> do you think society is changing since I last saw you towards the unborn? You know, in one sense, um, human civilization never changes. We remain as fallen and sinful as the day Adam and Eve ate of the fruit in the Garden of Eden. And so um, the desire to control death, to use death as a solution yeah. to suffering is always going to be part of human civilization. Um, so in that sense, we as Christians are not surprised, although we are uh, deeply grieved by the ways that society uses death as a solution. On the other hand, um, I do see Lutherans for life um, Gaining opportunities, gaining traction, gaining a hearing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a great time to be Lutherans for life. Yeah. We continue to open up new uh, life teams in congregations across the country, new life chapters uh, in communities. We continue to partner with uh, Lutherans around the world even. Uh, Canada. In Canada, Canada too. in the Dominican Republic, in oh. India, in England. Latvia, England, in uh, across the pond as they say. Um, helping them uh, not have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to thinking about how we uh, speak and take action as Lutherans uh, for the value of human life. And so um, Lutherans for Life continues to expand in that way. Um, and I do believe that what's changing in American culture mm. is that uh, fewer and fewer people are content to stay silent. 
Um, we're, witnessing, we're witnessing a polarization, I think. Um, and what that means is that people on both sides of life issues are becoming more vocal. Um, that's a good thing because Christians are speaking up. They're taking action. They're learning how to deliver our message with hope and joy, intervene, change hearts, save lives. On the other hand, though, the enemy is continuing his assault um, and the forces of evil uh, like are California. growing more vocal as well. Mm. Like California, something about the um, <clears throat> present, pres- I don't know. Yes, in California, the state passed a bill uh, that requires pregnancy resource centers to post notification that abortions are available at abortion clinics. That's currently being challenged in the Supreme Court. It was just argued on Tuesday, and things are looking optimistic. Uh, The justices were very skeptical about the constitutionality of that law and compelling pregnancy resource centers to advertise something that they don't believe in. We expect at the end of the summer we'll hear uh, a verdict from the Supreme Court on that. I hope the Supreme Court is on the unborn side. And uh, uh, I hope assistant suicide is kicked out in euthanasia. Uh, that seems to be... Uh, several states are into that right now, and mm-hmm. that's sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how are you going to fight against that as well as help our unborn. Mm-hmm. Well, assisted suicide bills have been proposed in um, about 35 or 40 states over the last couple of years. Those bills have been defeated in absolutely oh, every state. God. Most of the time, they don't even come up for a vote. However, mm-hmm. uh, the District of Columbia, California, and Colorado have all legalized physician-assisted suicide over the past couple of years by ballot initiative. So that's they go murder. directly to that's, the people. That's murder. Well, you know, here's what I think. People who are um, terminally ill, who are chronically disabled, who are incapacitated, who are nearing the end of their life, they are a vulnerable population. They need to hear from us that their lives, their personalities are still valuable to us, that we believe that their existence has purpose, and that we're not going to abandon them or, um, you know, so to speak, hand them a gun to make themselves dead because they're a blessing to us. That's what Lutherans for Life believes according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Life is precious. Why should we destroy ourselves? We we learn even through our suffering. That's right. People are precious. Uh, The more people, the better. Um, And as you say, when we have loved ones or acquaintances or neighbors who are suffering, it gives us the opportunity to be servants to them. And that really is a gift that they give to us. And I want to challenge everybody who feels like they are a burden on somebody else to turn that viewpoint around and think what a gift you're giving to them by allowing them to be needed. You need them to help support you and take care of you. And you're unifying the, the family together again. All, when they're all spewed out all over the place as you're growing up, mm-hmm. when someone does die, everybody comes together again. It does strengthen communities. We it have does. seen that time and time again. And, and so, families, too. And so we continue to try to advocate for folks um, that as, as you near the end of life, please, please don't think of yourself as a burden. Please don't think of yourself as um, having no meaning or no purpose or better off dead. There are so many loving Christian people, Lutheran people, who want to walk alongside you, hold your hand, um, help alleviate your pain, and learn with you, grow with you, receive God's blessings with you. So please allow us to reach out to you. So um, we're having uh, several seminars here for uh, Fort Wayne, for the community. Um, Did you know that we're having uh, Dr. Alan... How do you pronounce his name? Mulally? Mulally. Yeah. He's going to be here. That sounds, May, like, that sounds like maybe an Irish name. It is, you know. <laughs> It'll be at Fort Wayne, May 5th at Allen County Right to Life. There will be a seminar on the end of life. And there'll be another seminar in November 3rd. And I don't remember what it is. I'm sorry. I'll say it another time. Well, I hope that Dr. Malali will uh, will speak to the dangers of legalizing assisted suicide. Yes. Um, 
the risks to families and communities and, and vulnerable persons and and the value of um, palliative care. Palliative. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I worked in the parish for 12 years. Uh, 10 of those years I served in a very large congregation. So I had the opportunity to minister as a pastor to lots and lots of people who were nearing the end of life, who were suffering. And I can tell you, um, and this is borne out by statistics from the medical field, um, 97 to 99% of people um, do not experience irremediable suffering as they are ending life. Medical technology has advanced to such a point that um, our management of pain um, is really effective. Yeah. And I can tell you that most of the people that I ministered to um, were actually conscious. I played cards with uh, a guy who was dying of cancer two hours before he went to be with the Lord. Um, this is the advances that medicine has made. There is no need to be afraid yeah. because we can make you comfortable. And you can uh, minister them. Mm -hmm. And they can, that also ease their uh, spiritual side. Sure, and they will. you will learn about the, the strength of the gospel of Jesus Christ and their faith as they share with you the comfort that, and the hope that they have as they enter into eternity. Now, you're here in Fort Wayne for a reason. Why? Yes, uh, this seminary is my alma mater. So I am a 2003 graduate of Concordia Theological Seminary here in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I was ordained. And so I love to come back and share the message of Lutherans for Life with the seminary students. These are our future pastors, future congregational leaders, um, heroes in the faith. And I love to share with them about how we can be gospel-motivated voices for life. I believe Lutherans have a distinctive voice to bring to cultural conversations about life issues. We understand that a person's value is not based on how old they are or what they look like or what they can do or can't do, but it's, it comes from what God has done. A person is, is valuable by God's grace and not by their works. And also, a lot of students come here mm -hmm. from all over the world mm -hmm. so they can spread all about Lutherans for Life. Mm -hmm. And so I have a chance uh, tomorrow, I'll be delivering the sermon at the daily chapel service, and then uh, I'll be able to meet with the students in their field education class uh, right before lunch for about an hour to talk about um, how the gospel motivates us to be voices for life. This afternoon yet, I'm um, having a fireside chat in the student commons. We're going to talk a little bit about how I got into um, life-affirming work and um, some visions for how congregations and communities can be uh, life-affirming voices. I'm glad you're here. I love being here. I'm glad, I'm glad we're friends, too. I'm so glad you always invite me to be part of your program. Well, you are very special, and what you're doing is precious, special for all who are living. We all have the right to life. And we all have the gift of life that comes from gift God, our Heavenly life. Father. So every human being uh, is a precious treasure to God. Every human being is a gift to us, and we want to treat them like privileges. So, how long have you been with Lutherans for Life? I am enter uh, two and a half years. Two and a half two years. Two and a half years. I have been serving as executive director. Well, what were you before? I uh, served a parish in Lafayette, Indiana, for ten years. Yay! That? Home of Purdue University. Oh boy! <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, I'm glad you came here. Um, is there? What are you going to do after you leave? here at Fort Wayne? Uh, I'm going to go back home and see my family. Mm -hmm. uh, next Monday, I'll be at Springfield Lutheran High School in Springfield, Illinois, to share the message of the value of unborn human lives with the student body there. Um, then uh, the week after Easter, we'll be meeting with the State Federation Presidents of Lutherans for Life. So we have uh, 11 state federations across the Midwest where there are lots of active Lutherans for Life and they have a state board and they have state presidents and so all the presidents get together in St. Louis and we talk about um, new things that are going on, opportunities that we have. And the day after that, I'll be presenting, I'll be presenting on the end of life uh, wow. at uh, the Summit of Churches for Life. Uh, it's a non-Lutheran organization that helps churches establish life teams in their congregations and communities. So I get to talk about um, the dangers of assisted suicide and the value of palliative care and the gospel, the, what gifts the gospel gives even at the end of life. So when are you coming back? 
To Fort Wayne, that's a good question. I imagine I'll at least be back next spring. I come to the seminary every year. That's true. Um, I'll be around. But I get, you know, I get here every six months or so. I have a brother and a sister who live in the area, so that's family good. reasons come back. So look Did you to. know that September 28th and 29th and 30th, I do believe, this year, we're bringing in Dr. William Lyle, OBGYN, pro-life. Amen. And he's going to be talking to the the, the kids who are being confirmed, mm -hmm. and the, the neighborhood itself yeah. is invited, especially for the children, young children, not young children, children who are learning about sure. babies mm -hmm. and all that. He'll be doing about at least an hour lecture. He will be going to several different churches oh, very good. throughout Fort Wayne, and we're going to be, he's going to be there given a lecture or a seminar or whatever, mm -hmm. a talk about beginning of life, how Jesus is involved with all life. Amen. Right. Indeed. So, uh, would you like to come? Uh, I would, except my schedule is not going to permit that. Okay. <laughs> I thank you for the invitation, but... but uh, I think in in uh, in late September, um, I have an engagement. Oh, I think it's in the St. Louis area, but uh, well, we're going to be filming it. All right, I'll be so able to follow I'll that on video. You too. I thank you so much. I know that'll be a dollar. Anyways, this is almost the end of the show. Uh, what would you like to say to my audience, especially the young people who are have babies are going to have babies and are confused some are confused because they have babies you know unwanted babies at least shouldn't say unwanted what would you like to say i would say you are a precious treasure to god our heavenly father he has created you with his own hands he has redeemed you in the person of his son jesus christ and he calls you to be a part of his everlasting family and not only you but all of the people around you. Every human being is a precious treasure to God and a special privilege to us. Please allow us as Christians, as Lutherans for Life, to share in God's gifts with you. And you know, babies grow up to be adults, human, male or female. Babies start out the same way. They grow and they're adults. We're not, we're not piece of flesh. <laughs> in the womb, we are alive and human and we have the right to life. Right? A gift given by God to if, everyone. Yes. This is Patty Hunter. My first guest was Mr. Tim Gideon. Mm -hmm. And then my second guest is Dr. Reverend, you're a doctor? No. Reverend. This is Reverend. <laughs> Reverend Michael Salaming. So I'm glad I had both of you people on my show, and you're very, very precious to me and a good friend. Thank you, and God bless. Okay, it's Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. We'll see you next week. us all.